Here we can see an Airbus A380 spraying huge exhaust plumes in a clear blue sky with high probabilities of low relative humidity. We can use three observations to rule out textbook science that says contrails are a result of water vapor as a byproduct of engine combustion. First, the beginning of the visible trail is too close to the hot engine exhaust. You'll need to prove how a hot jet engine can eject ice crystals directly or only inches away from the hot jet exhaust of up to 300 degrees Celsius. Water vapor typically remains in the vapor stage above freezing for at least 20 to 35 feet from the jet exhaust at cruise altitude before it mixes with ambient air temperatures of minus 50 degrees Celsius to condense into visible ice crystals that NASA calls contrails. Number two, the trail from number three engine counting from left to right is distinctly different in density and color compared to the plumes of the other three trails. With all four engines performing normally, this visual anomaly is not possible under textbook contrail science since all four engines are inside the same column of atmosphere. Therefore, the plumes from all four engines should be the same in appearance, but they're not. Some critics claim the nozzles are only drain tubes to eliminate pylon moisture. This myth may have been true in the distant past, but multiple nozzles are now seen fitted to pylons with crude after factory workmanship to drain more than just pylon water. Remember, the military and government agencies will provide a cover-up story for every covert operation they want to hide from the public. We can see the nozzles are obviously installed after the aircraft left the Airbus assembly line since the paint is missing, the alloys are different, and the crude workmanship is not to Airbus factory specifications from the assembly line. Observation number three, we see an anomalous fifth plume originating from somewhere in the fuselage of the aircraft. This is strong evidence that an onboard container and pump system is supplying chemicals to the nozzles. A malfunction or leak in this system could explain both the existence of a fifth trail and the faded discoloration of the plume from the number three engine. It's most apparent that the nozzle fitted above the number three engine exhaust is partially blocked or starved so that it functions differently than the remaining three. Observations number one, two, and three are consistent with spraying from nozzles fitted to the engine pylon. A less likely explanation would involve the doping of jet fuel with chemical additives like sulfur in order to create a chemical trail and artificial cloud that doesn't depend on water vapor. But fuel doping doesn't easily explain how only one engine plume is different than the remaining three, nor does it explain the existence of a fifth mysterious plume exiting the tail of the aircraft. Now let's look at some real life confirmation of nozzle spraying from the experts. We can further verify our observations by looking at the recommendations of geoengineer Alan Robach at Rutgers University who wrote a paper in 2009 on, quote, benefits, risks, and the costs of stratospheric geoengineering, unquote. Dr. Robach favored using aircraft nozzles to spray sulfuric acid into the stratosphere to cool the planet as a hedge against global warming. Here's an excerpt, quote, Options for dispersing gases from planes include the addition of sulfur to the fuel, which would release the aerosol through the exhaust system of the plane, or the attachment of a nozzle to release the sulfur from its own tank within the plane, which would be a better option. Putting sulfur in the fuel would have the problem that if the sulfur concentration were too high in the fuel, it would be corrosive and affect combustion. 
Also, it would be necessary to have separate fuel tanks for use in the stratosphere and in the troposphere to avoid sulfate aerosol pollution in the troposphere, unquote. So what Robach is planning for the future is what we have been seeing in the skies for two decades or more. Geoengineers like David Keith and Alan Robach pretend that they don't know the military and civilian airline contractors are already spraying the troposphere with chemicals, but they boldly adopt current methods for spraying sulfuric acid into the stratosphere because it's safer, causes less wear on the fuel system and engines, and allegedly doesn't pollute the breathable air when the planes fly into the troposphere. But we all know that what goes up must eventually come down as pollution, and we will all need to find ways to avoid it. Keep looking 